Scorn faces an uphill struggle for recognition. Slated for release this coming October, it's the first in a wave of impressive and iconic horror titles coming late 2022, early 23. Ex-Dead Space co-creator Glenn Schofield's The Castillo Protocol launches December 2nd. Dead Space The Remake follows in January 2023. With the hotly anticipated Resident Evil 4 remake now officially announced for release March 24th, 2023. It's a phenomenal run of horror games in a relatively short space of time. So what can Scorn do to stand out against such stiff competition? For the uninitiated, Scorn is the upcoming first-person horror adventure from new studio Ebb Software. At first glance, its Geiger-inspired interiors evoke a sense of deep space dread reminiscent of Sigourney Weaver's Alien movies. It's a game with strong visual identity, dense with squelchy atmosphere, but this isn't sheer hellish landscapes for the sake of it. Scorn's visual horror leans on juxtaposition. Look closely and you'll discover contrasting architectural styles. Their conflicting appearance intend to unsettle players, like the sight of rusted metal teeth poking out of rancid gum lines. It's clear the immense verticality in Scorn's open spaces is inspired by gothic architecture. Cathedrals, if you will. Mostly imbuing a sense of order and purpose above the primordial chaos of organic biomechanical material. Conversely, the claustrophobic design of Scorn's asymmetrical passageways evokes an eerie pragmatism, as if constructed around a central hub, an ancient mechanical heart maybe, with ventricles and vessels sprawling outwards labyrinth-like. The goal, as stated by Scorn's principal environment artist, Lazar Stojanovic, is to create environments that are vaguely familiar but aren't like anything players are likely to have seen before. For gameplay, it's a fine balance between exploring Scorn's maze-like structures without repeatedly getting lost that's crucial here. Desperation sets in when you're on the fringe, not quite knowing where you are. This, to me, this is the crux of good horror. It isn't just about gore or jump scares, no. It's horror's ability to warp your sense of familiarity as a means to crawl under your skin that leaves the strongest impression. From the gameplay clips we've seen so far, it feels as though Scorn's environments are its main character acting as both the torch-bearing hero and sadistic adversary. It's an ecosystem with natural logic to its structure, akin to rotten trunks overrun with fungus, feeding populations of living or perhaps undead creatures with portals, barriers, and sockets nestled within its grotesque overgrowth. If there's a loosely established environmental language, then there's a set of rules. Confronting and understanding the environment's fear-inducing logic will be integral to progression. Ebb Software game designer Dusan Santovac states as much in the overcoming discomfort to solve the game's increasingly complex environmental puzzles will require careful observation, which can be hard to do while experiencing fear or anxiety. And beyond the abstract oppressiveness of the game's visual identity, how else does Scorn intend to scare you? Well, for one, its invasive sound design does a stellar job of pulling you deeper into its macabre realms. There's a fantastic video on Ebb Software's YouTube channel which, essentially, is two or so minutes of in-game sound without any supporting visuals, bar the Scorn logo. It's a frightening listen, full of video game sound effect mainstays like footsteps and gunshots, but also the cacophony of destruction, a flesh ripping apart by the forces of gravities, of sinew stretching over shards of metal, with blood-curdling shrieks, squeals, and contortions all delivered with deft and precision. Sound designer Dragoslav cites over on the game's Kickstarter page that the audio team recorded a ton of objects being obliterated – vegetables, wood, meat, bone, etc. – before adhering to the game's art-driven theme of contrast by categorizing all sounds as organic or mechanical. A boon for Ebb Software's first outing as game developer is their acquisition of two heavyweight composers who will both be lending music and sound design to Scorn. First up is Bosnia DJ, producer and sound designer, Atek. But perhaps most headline-grabbing, Lustmorv is on board, whose tonal sensibilities will undoubtedly add an emotional score to Scorn's unsettling sound world.
There's a short clip in the recently released gameplay footage montage of a wide open space what the development team are calling the Field of Decay. We see a vertebrae-like bridge towering over the player, with thick fog hiding structures beyond. It fits the brief of vague familiarity, but the most striking aspect of this clip is the music. It's pure tone, unshifting, and uncomplicated. It's surprisingly comforting like a torch in the dark, another contrast leading to more unease. Perhaps even more unsettling for those who are after a hint as to what it's actually like to play Scorn is the fact that the game's unique approach to gunplay doesn't simply lean on the tried and tested survival horror tropes of ammo scarcity and restrictive inventory, but instead advises weaponry as purely optional tools. The weapon's visual design straddles the line between organic and mechanical, of course, with recognizable pistols, shotguns, and grenade launchers as part of your arsenal. But it's the dual-purpose nature of the weapons that's most striking. For instance, the game's melee weapons double as a tool with which to interact with the environment, but it's prone to overheating if they use too much. There'll be plenty of occasions where fleeing through Scorn's maze-like corridors is the only option for survival. Scorn's attempt at balancing familiarity with strangeness can be fleshed out even further if we draw parallels to the work of surrealist painter Zhistov Bashinsky, whose art is another key touchstone on Scorn's creative identity. Bashinsky's paintings are disturbing. They depict otherworldly dystopia where you're never quite sure what you're looking at. Bekshinsky himself states his work isn't born purely out of morbidity, though. No, its distressing nature comes from his own, as he puts it, physical exhausting exploration through his own psyche. A hostile, unconscious void he suggests as discoverable inside all of us should we choose to burrow deep enough. His ideas propose a sacredness to our personal dystopias, and his artwork is an attempt at visualizing the creative potential of the unconscious mind oftentimes achieved by layering opposing images and themes. It's again about harnessing a contrast aesthetic. Organic meeting biomechanical. Cathedrals versus factories. How does this benefit Scorn, though? What does it all mean? Well, as stated, there's a conflict at play in Scorn's environment, but it's dreamlike. Like Bekshinsky's paintings, Lustmord's music, like the entire Ebb Software development team's artistic vision, art of this kind attempts to shine light on pain. We're seeing the power of nightmares, and their clarity is uncomfortable. Great art is a canvas for you to project your innermost emotions onto. Scorn, for relative lack of real-world counterparts, is somewhat blank. It'll absorb your biggest fears, tear them apart, warp them, then force them right back into you. If there's one major hope I have for Scorn, it's this. Art of this nature is a cautionary tale on the fragility of the human body, of its mind and spirit. We're destined to deteriorate, after all. If this all sounds a little too poetic, hyperbolic, or philosophical, just know I've borrowed this line of thinking from acclaimed filmmaker and one-time Hideo Kojima collaborator Guillermo del Toro, who, when describing Bekshinsky's unique brand of surrealism, stated, It's hidden poetry tainted with death and rust. This is exactly how I feel about Scorn, and its potential to reflect my biggest fears back to me makes it the most unsettling of any upcoming horror game. Did you know that we at Gaming Pult upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.